We're going to take a peek at section 3.5, Dividing Polynomials. And in this section, uh, we're going to pull on division and some things that you may or may not know about division, because I know that long division is not like a big thing these days anymore. Uh, I'm actually going to turn this to 178. So this means 178 divided by 3, right? Like how many 3s goes into 178? So... We use calculator for it, um, but we could do this old algorithm called long division. And long division is like, how many times does this three go into one? Nope, how many times does three go into 17? Five times. And we go three times five is 15 and subtract that. So then let's see, seven minus five is two. And then we bring down that. So now I've got a 23. How many times does three go into 23? seven I think so seven because seven times three is 21 then we subtract that that leaves us with a two and if we wanted to go into decimals we could go point zero and pull it down but we have a remainder of two so when we're in elementary school we write like 57 remainder three uh sorry remainder two uh because it's it goes in it with two left over but we can do better than saying remainder 2. This 2 is still being divided by that 3. So we could say 57 and 2 thirds, the 2 still divided by 3. You know, fractions are just uh, division undone, right? The lazy man's to be like, I'm not going to do any more division. I'm just going to leave it as a fraction. So we can use this method, which may or may not be familiar to you, to do uh, what's called uh, long division for our dividing of polynomials. So for example, if I had this polynomial, uh, 2x cubed minus 3x squared, and I'm going to divide that by x plus 2. So what we're saying is, how many times does x plus 2 go into this? Like, what would it be? In other words, if I had an x plus 2, and I wanted to multiply it by something and get that, 2x to the third minus 3x squared plus 4x plus 5 as my answer, what would this have to be? All right, so I'm going to set this division up the same way I set that division up. So I'm going to say x plus 2 is going into 2x cubed. All right, and now I'm all set to do this division. And all I'm going to look at is the first term. And I'm going to make it so that this first term will subtract out that first term. In other words, how many times does x go into 2x cubed? Well, it goes into 2x squared times. And so now I'm going to go 2x squared times the whole thing, right? The, the plus 2 is going along for the right here. So 2x squared times x is 2x cubed. I wanted that to match because when I subtract, I want that to go away. 2x squared times 2 is 4x squared. And now just like over here, I had this 3 times 5 is 15, and I'm subtracting. I'm going to subtract over here. So now I'm going to subtract this whole thing. So that negative gets distributed to both of those pieces, right? Is a negative 7x squared. Okay, bring down the next term. Just like over here, right, we had 2, and then we brought down the 3. Myself a little space here. And then I just do it again. So I'm just looking at first terms again. x into negative 7x squared, that's a negative 7x. And I'm just doing that because I just want that first term to cancel out. Do it again now. Negative 7x times this. Uh, negative 7x squared. Negative 7x times 2 is negative 14x. And now I'm going to subtract that. And be super careful with this subtracting. The first term is pretty straightforward, right? Like negative 7x squared minus negative 7x squared, 0. But this one, 4x minus uh, negative 14x, that actually gives me negative 10x. No, no, it doesn't. It's positive 28. Because 4 minus a negative. Oh, brother. It's, eight, uh, sorry, positive 18. 4 minus negative 14 is positive 18. See, be super careful with it. Bring down that 5. And then we can look at this next piece, x and 18. So I need to go plus 18. And then 18 times x is 18x. Uh, 18 times 2 is what? 30... 46, 36. So again, I've got some subtraction to do. 18x minus 18x is 0. I wanted that to happen. 5 minus 36 is negative 31. Notice that's my remainder. 
So I have a remainder of negative 31. And that negative 31 is still being divided by that x plus 2. It's just I don't have anything else to pull down. So now I'm going to write plus, or actually it's minus. So I could write a plus negative 31 still divided by x plus 2. This could also be written as just minus 31 over x plus 2. Notice this is my answer when I divide that by that. Now that was long division. When this bottom uh, piece down here is just a number, just like a linear factor, we can actually use something that's called synthetic division. Um, and synthetic division is basically this. It's just kind of a streamlined way to do this type of division. It has a little bit of a different feel, a little different setup. But once you get used to it, it's super, super efficient. It's very clever, I think. And notice, like... This divided by that, I could write it this way. Just I would just want to point out that's also equal to this. These are saying the same thing, although that's not a three, that's a two. So for synthetic division, the thing I'm dividing by, whichever way it's written, I'm going to make as make that a zero. What x value makes this a zero? Negative two, right? So I'm going to use negative two instead of positive two. And then here, if you look back to here, notice like these columns. Here's an x cubed column. Here's an x squared column. Here's an x column. Here's a ones column. They kind of line up. So I don't really need to write x cubed and x squared over and over and over again. There's, there's meaning in the location. So I'm just going to pull the coefficients out of here. So I'm going to pull up the 2, the negative 3, the 4, and the 5. And uh, let me say real quick, the reason why we do this negative 2, make this a 0, because we end up subtracting everything anyways. Everything ends up getting subtracted by a negative anyway. So if we do it up front, it actually saves us a step. All right, here's the steps to synthetic division. First thing, you just bring it down. Bring down the first number, 2. Notice that 2 matches this 2 right here. Then what you do is you take that and you multiply it by this number. So 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. And then from here on out, you just do the same thing over and over again. Now you add these together. Negative 3 plus negative 4 is negative 7. See how that happened here? Negative 3 minus 4 gives us that negative 7. Then you do that same thing again. Uh, negative 7 times negative 2 is positive 14. Then you add 4 plus 14 is 28. Notice that ended up being here. Why did I do 28? I did 28 again. 18. That is here again. Then you do it again. Uh, this times negative 2 is negative 36. Add negative 31. And notice what you get is you get this is your remainder and you get these values. We had x cubed divided by an x. So this first term is an x squared. So I have 2 x squared minus and then it'll just decrease 7x plus 18 minus this is my remainder 31 over x plus 2. Synthetic division is long division really streamlined uh, for when this thing you're dividing by is linear. Let me do another example of synthetic division. All right, so as I set up my synthetic division, what x value makes this a 0 in the denominator? Negative 1. I've got 5x squared, 3x's, and negative 2 1's. And so synthetic division, bring it down. Multiply 5 times negative 1. Add. Multiply 2 times negative 1. Add. Oh, my remainder is 0, which is great. And so remember when I do the synthetic division, these are the coefficients of my answers. And I have an x squared divided by an x. So the first term is going to be 5x, right? x squared divided by x is 1, minus 2. So it's my remainder is 0. I don't have to write plus 0 over blah, blah, blah because that's just a zero. So that means that this actually goes into that. Like x plus 1 is a factor of that. In other words, this could have been factored to x plus 1 times 5x minus 2. All right, let's do a few more examples here. So I've got this division going on. So x plus 2 is going to go into that. I might even take this. I mean, I'm going to see what happens when I get an answer. I might factor this fully. So first off, I'm going to do synthetic division. So what makes this a 0? It's negative 2. Lift out these coefficients. i got 4x squared, 10, uh, 4x cubed, 10x squared, negative 6x's, and negative 20 
ones. All right, here we go. Bring it down, first thing. And then we jump into that multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add cycle. So multiply, add, multiply, uh, add, ooh, negative 10, multiply, add oh cool that's a factor so what that means is um my answer when i do this division x cubed divided by x so my first thing will be x squared is 4x squared plus 2x minus 10. that's my answer of the division if i think about like what i'm doing with this i'm factoring this into like x plus 2 times that right like i could keep factoring from here if i had to factor this thing completely because now i have a quadratic i could factor but the division gives me that answer. Here's another one. What makes this a zero? Negative seven. Lift out these coefficients. So I got three x to the fourth, 18 x cubed. How many x squareds do I have? Zero. I need a placeholder in here. I need something to hold that x squared place. Remember, because location has meaning. And then I've got negative three x's, and then I've got 40 ones. Placeholders are vital to this. So think of there's a plus zero x squared in there. This is holding down that x squared spot. Bring it down. Then we jump into the multiply add um, algorithm. So multiply, negative 21. Add, oh, I think that's negative three. Multiply, add, multiply, 21 times negative seven, negative 147. Then we can add negative 150 times negative 7. 1050 add 1090. That's a massive remainder. So notice we had a 3x to the fourth divided by x. So our first term will be in terms of x cubed. So our answer is 3x cubed minus, and then it'll just descend 3x squared, 21x's minus 150. Plus, since my remainder is 1090, that is still being divided by this x plus 7. x plus 7. All right. And on this uh, last one, then, x cubed minus 27 divided by x minus 3. So let's see. What makes this a 0? 3. And then I've got 1x cubed. I've got 0x squared. I've got 0x's. And then I've got minus 27. So I need those placeholders for the x squared and the x. So bring it down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, remainder of zero. That means this goes into that uh, exactly. So that would make, whoops, that should have been a one right there. Sorry about that. Um, that would make this an x squared, x cubed divided by x is x squared, plus three x's, plus nine. Well, great. Give these problems a try. Um, add 3.5. Make sure you're doing the practice. Message me with any questions or post them in the forums.